Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to be demonstrating on how to put on a flat collar. Now, this is just one technique. It may work with the commercial pattern that you're working with or be a little bit different, but hopefully still help you out. I'm going to be using pattern pieces from our pattern drafting tutorial, so if you want to check those out, go to professorpincushion.com. So let's go ahead and get started. With this technique of putting in a flat collar, you're gonna utilize both your collar pattern and also your facing patterns as well. And yours may look a little bit different than mine, depending on what kind of top you're putting together. So usually if you just put in a collar, you don't need your facing pieces, but in this particular thing, we're gonna be using both. I already have my bodice done up into the point that the collar needs to go in, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut everything else for putting in the collar. So my Peter Pan collar pattern, I'm gonna cut four out of my fabric, two out of my fusible interfacing, out of my back facing piece, I'm gonna cut two out of my fabric, two out of my fusible interfacing, and front neckline facing for this particular pattern is cut on the fold. So I have the same thing in fabric and then the same thing in fusible interfacing. You're going to apply your fusible interfacing to two collar pieces, make sure they're opposite collar pieces and it goes to the wrong side of the fabric. So the right side is face down on the ironing board and then you can feel the texture of the glue bubbles in the fusible interfacing and that goes to the wrong side. You're also going to apply fusible interfacing to all your facing pieces as well, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it to this collar piece. So I put my pressing cloth over the whole thing. Be careful not to shift anything underneath. I'm going to dampen it. I already have my iron heating up. I'm carefully going to place it down, leave it down for a few seconds, then carefully lift it up and move it over to the next section until you cover the whole piece. And you can test it by seeing if the fusible interfacing is sticking to your fabric. So it's staying pretty well on that side, and you can see on this side, I still need to do it. Both these color pieces now have fusible interfacing on the wrong side. Now I'm gonna take each one of these and I'm gonna pair them with a color piece that does not have fusible interfacing. You're gonna place them so it's gonna go right side to right side. So the fusible interfacing is still gonna be on the outside. Line it up. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Go ahead, pin it into place because then we're gonna take it to our machine. We're not gonna sew on this inner curve right here. Instead, you're gonna sew here and on the outside curve. This part's gonna stay open so then we're able to flip it right side out. Your seam allowance for this is going to be whatever your pattern designated it to be. For the pattern I created, I did a half inch. I'm gonna do a half inch seam allowance. And my stitch length is just normal. So I'm not doing anything special. Don't forget to back stitch on both sides. After you finish your seam, go ahead and trim it off, your seam allowance, so you're leaving about a quarter of an inch. Then for the curved areas, you're going to be cutting in little notches, and I'll show you how. Be careful not to actually cut into your stitches. And you'll see a little triangle cut shape like that. So I'm gonna do that about every half inch. If you have any corners, maybe you have a different type of collar that has a corner in it, you're gonna go ahead and trim off the corners. Again, being careful not to cut your stitches. So what you end up with is something like this. So you can see all my notches on the curved edges and I cut off the corner and I made sure I trimmed my seam allowance. Then you can go ahead, turn it right side out and you're going to press it. After you turn it right side out and you press it, you're still gonna have this open raw edge here in the inner curve. So all I'm gonna do is just do a basting stitch so you don't have to worry about doing any back stitching. And the seam allowance here really doesn't matter. It's just a temporary stitch just to hold these edges together. So I'm just gonna quickly do a basting stitch, which is the longest stitch on your machine, just on that open raw edge. Now I'm gonna go along the finished edge. So this is the part that does not have the basting stitch. And you're gonna do a top stitch or an edge stitch, which is you're gonna stitch right along this finished edge here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on this side, and I'm just doing a regular length stitch for this, and I'm trying to get pretty close to the edge, 
and you can go ahead and do a couple of back stitches as well. You just really want to do this because it's really going to make your, your collar look really professional and finished. My bodice is put together enough so then I got to the point where I need to put in my collar. So the shoulder seams are done, my zipper's done in the back. We're looking at it right side out. This is the front and then this is the back. I'm going to take each of my collar pieces and I'm going to start placing it. So I have a large dot on one end which indicates this is going to be the front of the collar. I'm going to start where my center front is in the front of the bodice. I usually have a notch here, I accidentally cut it off so I just made a mark here with my fabric marker. I'm going to start here, I'm going to pin all the way around and then the back of the collar is going to match up with this finished edge here in the back. I'm going to do the same thing with this other one. Now when you place your collar pieces onto your bodice, place it so that the collar side that has the interfacing, so I have interfacing on this one, is faced up and the fabric that does not have interfacing is going down towards your bodice. Normally what I like to do, so I'll start here in the middle. When I do my next one, I'll just overlap it by a little bit. You don't want them to be separated, you want them to overlap a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this one and once they're both pinned into place, go ahead and again you're going to baste everything together. Again that's a temporary stitch just to hold the collar to your bodice. Now I'm going to assemble my facing pieces. So here's the front, here's the back. I already have fusible interfacing on the wrong side. My pieces are right side facing up. This is one of my back pieces here. So on each end of the front, I'm going to put a back and you want to have an inner curve going on here. So I'm going to take the ends, place them right side to right side, pin it into place. Whatever your pattern says, your seam allowance is, that's what you're going to sew here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a half inch and then press my seams open. So there's one side. I'm going to go ahead, grab my other one and do the same thing on the other side as well. Here's my facing wrong side up. So the interfacing side is facing up. All along this outer curve, we're going to turn over a quarter of an inch. You're going to pin and press it into place. So just from here to here. So you can see my folded edge here on the wrong side. This is the interfacing right here and I'm just going to stitch right along this folded edge here as close as I can get and that's going to finish that raw edge of the outer curve of our facing. I'm going to grab my bodice piece once again. So here it is with the collar basted to the neckline. Now I'm also going to stitch my facing to the neckline as well. And what it's going to do, it's going to finish this neckline edge for us. So you're going to want to line up the raw edges. I have my center here. I'm going to pin it and you're doing it right side to right side. So right side of facing, so that means the inner facing side is facing up towards you. And I'm going to pin this all the way around. Now this part of the facing back here, it should overlap by whatever your seam allowance is. So mine's a half inch. I made a mark here a half inch from the end and that's going to be sticking out like that. We're eventually going to fold this back so you don't have to worry about it if you think it's going to be sticking out funny. So I'm just going to pin this all the way around and then you're going to stitch whatever your neckline seam allowance is. After you finish your seam, if you need to, go ahead and trim your seam allowance. I did mine a quarter of an inch so I didn't really need to trim it. But I did cut in all these notches because it is a curved seam. Next what you're going to do is you're going to take the facing and you're going to pull it away from everything else. The seam allowance should end up under the facing because what we're going to do is we're going to stitch right along on the facing side along that seam line and all this seam allowance under here would be stitched right underneath that facing part. For my top stitch, I'm just doing a regular lane stitch. Don't forget to back stitch. And you can see I'm sewing right along that seam line there, but I'm making sure that I'm staying on the white, which is my facing. Next, you're going to take all your facing and you're going to turn it to the inside of the bodice. So this is all going to get tucked under. So then you're just looking at the collar here at the top. Now we still have these raw edges on the end here past the zipper. So you're going to fold that into the wrong side, whatever your seam allowance is, half inch. 
and then you're going to fold it. That way this folded edge ends up alongside your zipper teeth. Using a regular length stitch, I'm going to stitch right along this top folded edge as close to the edge as I can get. And that should help keep our facing on the inside of our bodice. Next, I'm going to sew the folded edge of my facing to the inside of each side of my zipper. So it's just the facing and the back of the zipper tape. That's it. That's all you're sewing together. So I have some contrasting thread on my needle here. It's already a knot. So I'm just starting, as you can see, on my facing. And then I'm grabbing a little bit of the zipper tape. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of the facing. And I'm just staying right along this folded edge of the facing. So my stitches appear a, a lot smaller. You just want to make sure that when you fold your facing, the folded edge is away enough from the teeth that it's not going to get caught in the teeth when you're zipping your zipper up and down. So now I'm in the facing, so now I'm going to grab a little bit of the zipper and then a little bit of the facing. So I'm going to do this all along the edge and I'm just showing you for one, but you would do it for the other side of the end of the facing as well. With the hand sewing completed, the facing is now on the inside of the bodice and with that, my collar is done. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.